everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I want to show you how you can paint an adorable spring lamb with a flower crown. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi, guys. He is going to be tracking me with this, uh, a bunch of our, we have five, five robotic cameras, a lot of robotic Someone. cameras. Someone, yeah. <laughs> we have some number of robotic cameras that track me and zoom in and make sure that you can see every part of the action. If you check the description, you'll see materials and also a link to our website where you can find resources to complete the painting. Um, you can also find here on Facebook and also on the website, the video where we did the acrylic ground, which was phthalo green and burnt sienna painted in and used the gritting method to draw the lamb in. If you don't draw, it's okay. There is a free traceable provided on the website. You can also get your reference there and your gritting reference there. So that's a lot of information is there for you for free. I'm ready to show everybody how to paint this adorable little spring lamby lambs. All right. Are you ready, John? Yep. Did I introduce John? Mm, maybe. Oh, the mic is better than John. Yeah, I did. Okay. I don't know. I was... Sometimes I get so into the intro, I'm like, blah, 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 it's blah, It's like, blah, I'm blah. so busy working on, like, looking, does everything, did everything go? Are we live? We're live. Quiet Hi. art teacher. I okay. Barely talk. You ready to turn around? Yeah. Okay. So here he is. We've done little sketchy sketches of him in. Um... I'm going to be like putting the background in a few of the flowers um, because we want to be able to put some of his little wooly wool kind of interwoven on the thing, maybe. And then I'm going to show you how to get his light fur. I'm going to show you how to get his pink nose, his beautiful eyes, and just make him the cutest little smudgy cute thing that you've ever seen in your life, which is my favorite thing to do. Over here, to do this magic, we're going to be using the colors cadmium yellow medium, phthalo green, phthalo blue, titanium white, Mars black, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, or yellow oxide, just as fine. Uh, cad red light, but you could use cad red medium. You could use naphthol red light, right? Any of the warm light reds would be fine there. Quinacridone magenta and diox purple. These are some really fun colors to be working with. I love these colors. I am going to start out with a nice big brush to paint in the background. All right, this is a number 10 bright. It's going to be four acrylic paints, a ruby satin. It's a really fun brush for acrylic. I'm going to dip my brush in water. You can see right here. And I'm going to take a little bit of my blue and some of my brown. Now, here's the thing. With burnt sienna and phthalo blue, you can get a green or a gray, depending on if you mix more blue or if you mix more brown. So that's how that works. And you will really start to tweak that in. If you're having trouble seeing if it's running green or if it's running gray, you can always add a little bit of white to it to see what its values are. But what we're trying to make is a darker, distant, almost bokeh background that our little lamby lamb is standing in front of. So you can see how with the acrylic ground, this kind of loose painterly effect really works since the canvas is already kind of covered somewhere. Now, right here about midpoint of the ear is where that part of the ground ends. I'm gonna come around here, coming back up through. I'm really excited about painting him today, John. Yeah? Yeah, he's so cute. Um, I've gotten to do a few of the things that I've wanted to paint for a while, but had not painted like my deer. I got to do my deer and flowers. Wanted to do that for a long time. An otter got to do that. And now I'm getting into my spring lamb. So many of my personal art wishes are coming true. Now in this, I'm going to take a little bit of my green and my blue and bring it over into this deep dark mix. But I'm going to add the smidgiest smidge of white. See that right there? Yeah. It's still pretty dark. And I'm going to just on the tip of my bristles, I'm going to add some little out of focus. See how this is? Kind of little back and forth brushing. Isn't that fun? So you can create a lot of interesting little bokeh effects. There we go. I'm going to add a little water to that, but I still need it to be a fairly dry brush. So sometimes you'll find you've got to like add a little water, take a little water away. What I'm doing is making sure that that background isn't just stagnant. It is a little bit interesting. And that bit of color also is going to really bring it to life and make it seem like a distant landscape. 
but you can see it's not an orderly effect. I'm not doing a very orderly mix. It's very loose. It's very painterly. It's very groovy. And I'm working all of it on here. So when I'm brushing back and forth, the brush is even softening it into the canvas. Now coming down, the green begins to really become brighter. So I'm going to take my phthalo and a little bit of my cad yellow. And I'm going to begin to brush the front area. And with that color, really, really exaggerating those wonderful, yummy color differences. Now, if you're having trouble getting to any part of your painting, remember to turn the painting, not your body. That's for your health and well being because you don't want to hurt yourself while you're painting. No, not at all. Our injuries are super embarrassing to the doctor. It's like <laughs> sport injuries, but no. no cool bruises well because like they they like are like have you been playing golf or have you been no i'm just been painting a lot lately and then they look at you like what how do you hurt yourself with art how full, do you do it I'm it's like, full contact know. painting so to get a nice transition i'm taking my brush over right and i'm going to make sure that i kind of see how i've had the all the color from here and i brought it over to this mix that i had here Mm. And it makes kind of a nice half tone. Oh, it did. It blended it in. Nice. Yeah. And then you can always come in and grab a little of the blue and a little bit of the brown, not rinsing out your brush, and also bring some of that down this way. And that is another way of creating a visual blend on something when you're trying to. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little of my yellow right into my brush. Boom, 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 boom. And a smidge of my white. And I'm going to go ahead and do that same sort of brushing technique that I did in the background around here in this brighter green. But you're going to see that it really, really creates a little drama all through my background, doesn't it? I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So good. That that really does make a interesting bokeh like effect. It does. It does. And it gives you that soft, you know, it looks really good when it posts, it looks really good on the wall. And it's really it yes, it does take a little bit of tuning to figure out how to keep your brush light enough, to keep it really nice on the end, to not because if you're telegraphing in this hard, it's gonna be too hard to get the effect. You've got to be telegraphing in about that hard. It needs to almost tickle the canvas. If you touch it to your hand and it's like pickling, that's about the right pressure. If it would relieve like, it's almost like a massage or relieve an itch, it's too much pressure. So coming in here, I've got a few areas and they have some interesting underpainting values. And so I'm gonna do what's kind of called blocking in. And the first part is back into his main wool, which I'm gonna take a little of my black and my brown together and a smidge of my white. And I'm going to come back here through this space and kind of like up here and then also under here with this color. And this is the under value that I'm going to be working my wool up from. So it's still, you know, it gives us that sort of depth into the fur that we need. Now coming up top, I'm going to get a little more black and maybe go a little more into my yellow. But I still want it to be a little bit dark. I'm going to come under the face and up the head like that. Under the chin. And definitely most of the side of the face right here. So it's still fairly dark, right? A little of this little of that, and even a smidge of the burnt sienna. Come underneath here. I'm just blending in all those areas. This is really going to help us set up our fur when we go to do his beautiful white fur on top of everything. Now up here and around his ears and around his nose, things kind of take a turn of events. So 
So I'm going to take my yellow ochre and I'm going to grab a little of my cadmium red. I haven't rinsed my brush. Have you guys noticed that? That's really going to help me. And I'm going to come up here. And I might even, looking at that, I maybe wanted even a little pinker, so I might grab some of my magenta. Oh, there it is. Just slightly pinker. And that's going to really help me as I paint in everything up here. So let's add a little more magenta into that mix. A little yellow ochre. There we go. I think I like that better. Definitely going to have this going on in the ears. Doing his underpainting is not really as hard as you might think. He's just a couple of layers and it's just understanding where he's going to be built from. And come down here and kind of fill this in almost to the nose. Under here. Right here. Sort of under there. So building up that first layer that's going to set up our fur. You guys ask me a lot, how do I paint my black dog or how do I paint my white cat? And it's, if you look at how we're going to do this, you can see there's this whole journey of these undervalues. It can be a little hard to just describe in text without like a full step-by-step. -step. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, because like people, the undertones of animals and their fur are not uniform. It's not one color just all throughout. Now we're going to get back into a little bit of this darker value here. I'm adding it in for there. And we're going to come right here at the chin. So it's a little different than the background, but it's got a bit of a shadow to it. I'm going to pull this out. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a smaller brush. Um, I still probably will do a bright. I just want a bright that isn't, is going to give me a little bit of room to move around. And I'm going to work in what is his nose, which is a lot more pink than you might possibly think. So you can see we're taking the quinacridone and a little bit of the yellow. And I'm going to continue. There we go. Let's put in all of this as that. Even Just underneath here. Get that little nose all put in. Yeah. As you can see, it's quite, quite, quite pink. Look at that. Won't that be lovely? I may even take a little bit of this wonderful color. To the tip of the ears. Isn't that nice? Yeah. And I'll come over here and maybe right here at this part of the ear. Any place that the ear is thin enough where that skin might show through, you want to pink it up. And then even I see a little bit of this slightly pinker value up here between the eyes. It is these rosy tones underneath that are going to make him feel very young. And then, of course, I'm going to go around the eye with that color. See how we're doing? Mm-hmm. That's going to really, really help us. Around the eye. It's not too crazy, it's just getting it in. One of my favorite parts. Also, the, these mix of colors just make me super happy, just in general. Mm. And I just really like to work them in. Because I know they're going to be so rewarding. All right, and the last thing that we know, well, he's got a very dark eye. Let's go ahead and take a little black and a little blue. I like to add phthalo blue to my black, and here's why, guys. That pooling of the blue lets me take Mars 
and make it super rich like it's a carbon black. So it helps me transform it. And it's the basis of the Payne's Gray that I personally like to make. I'm just taking a line, painting in that beautiful, beautiful orb with my black paint. Now he is totally blocked in. So I'm going to put some of the flowers here and everything. So when I do the fur, I think I can move some forward. It's just, it's a cool extra step and I think I'm going to go for it. Mm, all right. I'm going to take my green and a little of my cad yellow. Sometimes I'm going to add some burnt sienna to this brighter mix, even though it's brighter. And I'm going to come here. And I'm going to get some blocked in shape. So it's about an inch above here. If I need to go deeper green, I can. There you go. Yeah, there's going to be flowers and things coming out, but I want this depth or base of his little floral crown sort of already showing. And I'm going to bring it behind the ear a bit. Quite nice. It can be nice. You can put in some of the like more distant out of focus flowers. So if I took my yellow, and I can kind of mellow it with a little yellow ochre. Get some white into there. And I'm going to just make these little wiggly marks. These are distant little bits of flowers that are in his little crown. That we're capturing. Just little glimpses of, if that makes sense. I mean, the flowers we're going to plant way better than what he got. In real life. One, because any self-respecting sheep is a, would probably eat what I'm about to paint. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. You know, I was totally zenning out watching you. I was Were just you? Like, I'm going to take a little bit yeah. of my dot purple and my quinacridone magenta. And I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to come off here and I'm going to make a spike flower here and one here. I'm going to also maybe put one here just to balance it out. Ooh. And to start that, really what you just want to do is make a, make a little series of marks. Can you see a little dashing marks? On pretty dark, dark on dark. We're going to come out this way. All right. Okay. Oh my goodness. Yeah? Yeah. So we're just dashing this down. You're getting the flowers in? Yes. Getting those flowers in. We're making some bigger, more gorgeous little flowers. Those are, you've exaggerated those flowers a little bit. I have. I didn't necessarily, I like the idea of the flowers, but I wasn't like feeling the actual I'm gonna, flowers themselves. I'm, I'm going to arrange the Sherpa. Ooh, arrange me. Arrange me. Put me where I go. Over here. Down I'm here. also going to take a little bit of my yellow and I'll put a little of the yellow ochre into it. Stop I mean, my white controls. and a little bit of my yellow ochre. And I'm going to. Make some little dashes. Again, these are far off little bits of everything. I'm going to keep the clovers because I definitely like the clovers. And I think clovers are fun to paint. I may do some different other little flowers in different colors as we go forward. But I think the clovers are going to really balance this out. These little white bits are like those little, you know how like, Often wildflowers have those little stalks. And they've got little tiny buds on them. That's what we're talking about here. I'll put some Interesting. Here. So by making these little distant marks, these not so defined marks, it will help us. And then we can curl his little fur where we need to, but we can still pull some over the top. But these we can work on now. So once I have that in there, I'm going to take a little bit of my purple and magenta again. And I'm going to get some white into it. And I'm going to make, let's see if I can get a little too much water into my brush. 
I'm going to make little dashes. Here at the top, they can blend down into the purple that's already there. And even if they don't, I'll probably make some more. If you need to move the spike flower direction so you can paint it easier, definitely do that. See these little marks? I'm doing a dash and pull. See how that is? Sometimes as painters, when we see uh, certain flowers, we want to paint every part of them that could possibly be represented. I'm getting some darker color into my mix. There we go. So that we can kind of blend these two in. So see that the dark purple is going to help us. But we've lightened it a shade, so now they are all in base. Let's put a little more magenta into it. And let's get a lot more white. There we go. So we're just going to pull little bits of light into what's happening. And the reason I don't do uh, all the flowers like at once at one time is because they'll each have slightly different tones from each other. Because in the garden, if you ever look at it, they will. They'll have slightly different values, different tones. Come here and you can be even a little delicate with how you blend that out. And that just becomes really pretty really fast. Yeah, it does. Now the one underneath here, maybe I'm going to pull a little more like blue into it. All right, so just to make sure I've got a nice blend, I'll hit this again real quick because I want it to be a little bit wet when I start it. All right, here we go. So next value up. And because these are layered over each other, I'll know to leave a little space that stays fairly dark where the two flowers are touching. And you see how the slightly different values creates a little bit of drama. There we go. A little more blue. Hmm. And a little more white. Just bringing some of that color there. Take fun. Have fun with your flowers. They are what makes the painting so fun. This is, yeah, this here, I would say, this is unexpected lamb. Unexpected land. It's unexpected lamb. Unexpected lamb. Because <laughs> this lamb has unexpected flowers. He does, but you know what? You know, you can paint exactly what he's got. I find the privilege of being an artist is that you can always go in and go, you know, this is cool. This is great. I like the idea of this. And I can see some value and some important art information. And then take what you know about light, the things that you paint, and then customize it in a way that's surprising to you and everybody around you. You know, the more I look at Mr. Lamb here, the more I say that this must be an unexpected lamb. He's not surprising you. He's not he's not upset. He's not mahing you. He's just he's just like, I'm unexpected. And just, just looking flowers. at you. Already aren't they gorge? They're just and, stunning. And then when you get back and you see the light on them, they're just like, What? Those are just fantastic. Okay, while we're here, I'm gonna need a round. I like to do my clovers with rounds. I need a really a round that I have not abused <laughs> too badly <laughs> and i'm gonna load this up and so now i'm gonna get my pink kind of like i did before and a little bit of my yellow mix those together it's a fun set of colors just a smidge of my white and let's do a couple clovers I'm just taking a stroke and I'm pulling down. 
I feel like. Oh, hey, babe, I think we need to go check on the dog in the back room. Oh, really? Yeah, I think the kids are <laughs> in a room. Okay, I'll go get her. <laughs> I'm going to just, just sit here real quickly. Well, he's going and checking that. We're live, and so sometimes live things happen. And uh, our dog always says it's really fun to follow everyone in a room, but she forgets people close the door behind them, which is just, you know, one of those things. And then she's like, hey, I was here with you. So. So that is everything that we need to have going. So, yeah. Oh, hey. You know, babe, I'm about to sneeze. I'm about to sneeze. You may want to mute. You know, I don't know. Yeah, you're muted, but I'm not. I'm going to make you go. Just, so you're muted. I'm not. You can sneeze away. And I even made you disappear on screen because, see, you can't see you. So what I'm going to say is the dog is under my desk looking at me going, what do you think you're doing? I'm right here. The dog's just looking at me like going, yeah, no, everything's just fine. You don't know what's going on. Now, in the meantime, what you don't know is Cinnamon has snuck off over there and has having a sneeze. Did you okay now? I'm going to bring her back. Oh, no. I'll bring her back in here. and I'll, Let's get I'll some clover you. going. Okay. you're See, there she is. There we go. All right. And the dog was right here all along. Go f I don't know what I heard in the back then. I was all. Who see? knows? Okay. Who knows what it was? Okay. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to add another like maybe smaller clover. I just do these dashes and pulls. Can you guys see how we're doing the dash and pull? We're just putting the brush down and pulling it in. And then you grab a little white when you need it and you need a little dimensionality. And then you can add some to your wonderful little flowers. Look at those. You need another little layer? No problem. Okay. Although I feel like this little lamb would be like, I would eat this hat. Uh, yeah. If the if 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 he could, he would totally full on eat this. It's totally like Carmen Miranda's hat with all the fruit on it. Like, no, I would just eat this hat. Uh, it would be really good to do this in fall colors <laughs> as well. Those would be really fun. Yeah. We all would eat Carmen Miranda's hat. That's like a really good looking hat. That's like fruit basket, right? Yeah. It's just. Especially in today's climate, we're all like, no, fruit, please. Fruit. So here we are, just making these little clovers. You can see it's just a little round shape. And I'm layering these strokes back. Can you guys see how that's done? Yeah. So there we go. We have some of that. And now we can easily put some fur some places and then put a couple, like, little flowers that maybe come forward or a few leaves that come forward. And it'll create a very layered look. I'm going to get into my scruffly brushes now. Scruffly brushes, I like to use, are generally a mix of bristles and synthetic. You can do just bristles, or you can do a very stiff brush, or you can use, like, a brush that's very dry. There's a lot of ways to get here. Just know if you use just pure bristles, once you get them wet, they think it's soft, and you really have to pull the water out of it. Mm -hmm. So our first thing, our first mix, if we remember, was a little bit of our black and our brown. All right? For our fur. Mm -hmm. That was our first mix. I'm going to pull as much of that pigment out using my towel. And I'm going to get some white. And I'm going to make that next sort of value up. And we talked about this a bit on our how to do different kinds of fur video. Like curly fur and stuff. And so what it is really a lot of times is looking to see if you can see the patterns that the fur is making. More than even worrying about individual hairs. That's what I'm going to be looking at is what kind of patterns and things can I see to really kind of capture this. See how we're doing? And it's just a soft little dry brush. Dry brushing can be challenging if you've never done it before. 
curl one up. We were being unexpected. We curled a different way. And remember, you can layer over curls that you have. So you can put some over other curls because, you know, wool. I've got some kind of darker little wool happening here at the neck. I want to talk about that a bit. And by using the not pure white, the way all these are going to layer together when he's all done, he will seem even more white than if we just painted him all entirely white. Now we can kind of see how we were able to break our little line there and fluff him out a bit. Hmm. You know, so that's the important thing. Got to fluff him out a bit. Now those brush strokes are really important to making sure that you can. Uh... Yeah, curve them, make sure you're layering them, look at your reference and see if you can see specific curls, specific elements of that. I may even size down my brush a bit because the canvas is smaller. I may get into like a, like a six or I may stay eights, but I might get into a four or six, depending on what I have out clean. <laughs> I'm going to kick back into this and I'm going to just work maybe some smaller areas. Not everything. It doesn't have to be everything. Just some of the things. See how we're doing? Yeah. You don't paint every single hair. You just kind of paint the flow and shape that the hair might have. There we go. And well, the fur can be quite dark and deep. And the layers are, this is where, where the layers of acrylic paint really shine. It's what they were made for. And you can just have fun with it. You can just play with it. You know, you're going to have a wooly sheep, no matter what you do. Woolier than you ever imagined. Get back into my slightly bigger brush. And I'm going to get to that next mix, was, which was the black and the gold a little bit. Get my white into that. So we have a lighter color here. And I'll definitely layer these two areas together, but... We're going to make this look like some of him is more exposed. Ooh, little fluffs that way. Little, little fluffs. Little fluff, little fluff. Around the ear, I'll be very light. I will imply that it's there, but I want some kind of deep values still sort of to remain here. And really, that's basically because that will help me define certain areas of Mr. Sheepy Face. The, uh, what was it? Unexpected lamb? <laughs> Unexpected lammies. Now, when you're up close on stuff like this, you may initially be like, oh, man, that's like crazy. That's, I wasn't sure that that's what I was going to do or that's what I wanted to do. Right? There was also some votes for the name of Clover. Boy, I like Clover. Now, underneath the little chin, this hair goes a little bit longer. You know what was unexpected, though? Huh? Someone's allergic to Clover. That is unexpected. <laughs> unexpected lamb is clover. Allergic to clover or his name is clover? Both. <laughs> so there we go. I'm just pulling this up here. I, I think that and this I'm is coming the... Coming around the, the neck and you can see I got a little more white into it. I'm going to leave this chin here, but I definitely, definitely want to take some of these little bits of fur out here. 
I think this may be the uh, bar ram. If you need to come back in, you can get some darker fur and like right where there would be maybe a little bit of shadow. You can pull in some little bits of shadow. That gets the the side of the cheek over there. Yeah. It's on the other side. Talking about those important bits. Now, once that little bit of fluff is in, I'm going to go ahead and get my lighter light. And I can often take my brush and rinse it out and switch to my smaller brush and start picking some of the different values and highlights and things that would be going on around Mr. Lamp. Hmm. Some of that right there, but we know we want to leave some shadows in places because, like, his little face would cast a shadow, right? But even on this longer hair, we have to leave a few little spots of shadow. But on this outer edge here, his little lamby wool could be quite light. Look how light it could be. So you can think about, like, if he's right up in where the sun is, that could be very light. But if it's down under something that would be casting a shadow on it, it might be a little bit more cream. See how we're doing a curve, curve, curve? Mm hmm And then we bring back some little different counter curves. Just pulling those little different values. Where they go. Maybe not as many highlights right here because it's kind of deeper. And you have to realize this is almost like pointillism, so some of him will be much brighter than some other parts of him. The white will be more saturatedly white. Look up here at the back. Because more sunlight would be there. And it's okay to talk about that or exaggerate little areas of light like that. If you have a little area of light like right here, you can exaggerate it. I know around the chin, right down here before the lips, we've got a little bit of much lighter fur. But as I come up around, right, I'm going to get a little more yellow into that. Up here, it's a little bit darker. And I'm going to be brushing down instead of making little woolly marks. See how we're doing instead of making little woolly marks? In that space. Yeah. If you need a little brown into it, if you need a little black into it, you can get that. Just to create a little more definition. And along here, applying a little bit of a lighter shade to pull his little face a bit out of the background. That's what we've got to do. I'm going to come here and get some more of that sort of shadowed wool, just brushing that down. Just that burnt. There's a little part kind of in shadow right here. And you can come here and just be a little bit light with that. Not going to hurt you. And a similar kind of event is happening right here. It's so nice to have a bit of that pink underneath because it's going to pop through. It's going to show through. Now, as we move up, as we move places, like we have this little pink here with a little bit of the yellow like we had before. right? You can get that into your yellow ochre. And then grab a bunch of the white. And here, let's really look at how the fur, how his hair, his wool, the localic, the directionality is going to be a big deal. So, mm -hmm. Go ahead and don't get like overwhelmed like, oh, I got to I got to do every single one. But it is a good idea to pay attention to the way that the fur hair wool is growing. 
Yeah, you wouldn't want your uh, lamb to have a cow lick. Unless he does. Unless you he wouldn't does. have a lamb lick. <laughs> All right, so we're going to come here with this. And if you think right up the middle of this space, right up the middle of his nose, just brush out. There you go. You're brushing over that. Look at you go. Hopefully look at you go. Bring a little bit of that in. A little bit of the little lip there. Come back around, load back up, work the other side. You know, I remember that some of it comes down into the little nose space right there. That's what we're doing. And you can see how even right now, these undervalues are impacting that sort of tint and tone of him. Or them. Now all of a sudden it's gonna you're gonna be like, oh, that's why she went in some room to have like fur. I think I can see what you're talking about. I really love my spike flowers. <laughs> no, they turned out really pretty. Getting some more here. There we go. Just brushing that and you can see just getting that little sense of layered accomplishment. Pulling that around. And I mean, even at this rough stage, he's already pretty lamby. Yeah, he really is. Now, I think it'd be fun to work some ears a little bit at this stage. So I'm going to definitely make sure there's just a little pink into this and a little of my yellow into this. Just a little bit because I like that as an undertone, the white that I'm building up on. And I come to the edge of the ears. I'll pull some nice, long, gentle little hairs off there. Again, number four Cambridge, right? So it's a small, bright brush that gives me a scruffy little, little finish. That's what you're looking for is a scruffy little finish. When you're in the art store, feel your brushes. Pull the sizing right out of them. There you go. Right here. We're going to be done in the shake of a lamb's tail. Does anyone know what the exact time is for a shake of a lamb's tail? <laughs> You know, I think it's a uh, scotch longer than you think it is. A scotch, a skitch, a, bit, a smidge. <laughs> so again, yellow ochre in the pink because like along here, I remember like even right here, there's a little bit of that color. Over here, there's a little bit of that yellow. I wouldn't want to leave those little touches, those little elements behind. Mm. You're seeing something, you're seeing it for a reason. Your brain is processing it. I just didn't help that. There we go. So we're getting there. It's starting to be furry. It's starting to be fuzzy. Now. On his nose, I'm going to need to get a smaller brush. I'm going to get a number two bright. And I'm really going to be working a little of my pad red light and my magenta. 
Maybe my yellow ochre. Yeah, just like mixing that in there. So coming down here, I'm going to. You have the grid in, babe. Oh my gosh. Have you oh, had the grid in the that. whole painting? <laughs> well, <laughs> probably for a little while. <laughs> but I had the other one. I'll get it loaded up okay. right now. <laughs> I just noticed it too. That's okay. You have the grid reference for this one. And so I'm taking a slightly darker Shh. Shh. mix of the red and orange to get kind of the little shape of the nose, to get that little sense of nostril, that little sense of space, even coming down here. Right? I'm gonna get that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and begin. So right here at the edge. Gonna come here and get that same little mouse space that we drew in with our grid. And then that little bit of shadow. And wonderfully, he's nice enough to have a, little, a few little markings here. That's helpful to us. Now look at him up closely. Okay. I'm just making sure it's all good. I might even just Touch a little inside the, the little nostrils, mm. just because I can. Now a little yellow, oh, a yellow cad yellow might go into this, just warming it up, and then a bunch, a bunch of white. Let's come right here and start to paint in this cute, adorable pink nose. Cute, adorable pink nose. How are you guys doing? Good. This is Every this is definitely we painting. Come underneath here, slightly lighter pinker color. I may get a little more quinacridone into it just to pink it up a bit. I'm just trying to come along here and bring that nice lighter pink down. And then it's really kind of nice right here. And a bit right here. Wow, that really made the nose just come to life. Isn't that just nice? Whoosh. Fun stuff. Art is fun. I dig it. Now you can add his little spots or not add his little spots as you see fit what feels right for your painting. I'll tell you my thoughts on the spots. Okay. Um, I think they're really cute and I think they are. Some of what makes him adorable. I'm adding a little bright pop of the asymmetrical right spottiness. But it can, if you don't execute it right, it can get away from you. So my it's true. It can just look like you messed up and made a dot where you didn't. It really, want. really, un sadly and unfortunately and unfairly, totally can. So you can. This is one of those areas where you want to edit, like you're talking about, huh? It can be one of those. And so if you're highly confident in your painting, go ahead and dot it up. Mm. If you're not as confident, you're like, I'm still really clinging to the tutorials to get through, you may want to not dot. I will demo the dotting. Right now I've got it kind of even at his nostrils. Mm. As you go. As we all go. <laughs> Get this underneath here. Just kind of warm that. I don't know if you guys got to see that. And I may need to be back into the red and black mix that I had earlier.
Here we go. You know, it's okay to be attentive to some things. He's got a little, kind of a little freckle there. We're just doing a little of his freckles just to say, you know, we see him and we recognize him and we honor the things that makes him a unique sheepy. Back into my bristly brush mm. and doing the fur all around. Okay, so back into the fur. I'm gonna hair, wool. Everyone correct me, I don't know. Fur. Is it fur? I think it's hair. I think sheep have hair, right? Wool? Is it wool? Wool? Isn't it wool or hair? I don't know. I don't know if, you know, there's so many weird classifications like fur. I think grows to a specific length and stops, whereas hair continuously grows. Well, since we got a shirim, I'm going to say hair then. Yeah. So wool may be even another kind of thing, you know, like our fingernails. Yeah, all those things keep just growing and have all across the different animal kingdom different properties. So. It's hard to know which one has which. I'm not a, I'm not a fur, hair, wool person. <laughs> so I, yeah, I get what you mean. It's like I love, I, I love the thing about the internet. Yeah, I could Google it, and I probably will now that I have the question. Yeah, yeah. Now that I now, but you know, before I've asked the question in a live show and don't know the answer, I'll probably Google it, and I'm sure like a bunch of people will comment. I'm sure. And I don't mind that you do. That doesn't upset me. That's totally fine. See. When I was a kid, to answer this question, it would require me to go to this building that contained books. <laughs> and this Boy, didn't it? <laughs> and there was this giant wooden box that contained a whole bunch of little tiny cards that pointed to the book that might contain the information. That, that you might needed? Tell you. <laughs> right. Maybe contained it. Maybe. If Maybe. the book was there. I lament. Well, I just think that, that our kids have no idea. They're like, oh, gosh, I've got to look it up. The smell of the card catalog. <gasps> Dealing with the Dewey Decimal, yo. Things that people just don't know anymore. Yeah. Libraries are a wonderful resource. Check out your local library. There's one around. There's one around, and all the books there are free. Mm -hmm. And they're actually updating a lot of those to have multi-purpose makerspaces. What? Yeah, we actually have, like... Over 50 public libraries that are using our labs locations. That wasn't meant to be a plug, but. Uh, well, I'm just, up for that. Anything yeah. that helps human beings be happier. I'm up for all the stuff that helps human beings be happier. Just bringing these little things around. Uh, see, somebody said it's it's not. Hair or fur, it's wool. Just wool. Just it's it's its own thing. It's its own thing. Yeah. See, I was kind of concerned it might be some one of those like. It's its own thing. Things. Mm -hmm. It is its own thing. Thing. It's like, like I'm sure whatever is fuzzy on a bee isn't hair, fur, or wool. It's like probably some other thing that only bees get, like bee hair. <laughs> Major. <laughs> Watch it be like, nope, they have wool just like sheep. <laughs> I'm just making some adjustments where I feel like I got a little bit lost in the painting and I'm not liking the face shape. And remember, you can always do that. And then you just come back with your lighter colors and fix it. We should all go to the local library and look up what kind of hair is on a bee. I think now I'm going to go to the local library is what's going to happen. Actually, know where it is, weirdly. Well, when you have kids, you tend to know where they are. Oh, see, there's mixing it up now. Apparently, some sheep can be hairy. What? So, well, you know how some dogs can be hairy. 
Yes, our you, dog Twix is the the dog who was missing but not missing. She's a hairy dog, she not a furry dog. When I said her name, um, she has <laughs> hair. Yeah, which is nice because they uh, it's less dandery, so it's just different. Hairy dogs are different than furry dogs, I guess. Woolly sheep are different than hairy sheep, as they should be. As they should be. That's right. Hairy sheep. Tend to be in rock bands. <laughs> All right, continue to get lighter and lighter wool. <laughs> <laughs> this is can't. definitely a woolly sheep. It's definitely a woolly sheep. Okay. You know, because we're building those things up. There is a lighter area underneath the eye we can talk about. You know, sometimes there's a little bit at the edges here. It's one of those fun things to do. I like painting it. I find that it is very therapeutic. Now I'm going to rinse out because I have some nice bases here. I have some nice bases. I'm going to get a little water on there and I'm going to pull some white paint. Load up into my brush. Begin to piece out some areas with some noticeable and defining highlight. Where we're like talking maybe a little bit about specific shapes, even on the head. For those of you that know about the spider, mm. I just had a hair on me and it was tickling me and I didn't scream. <laughs> so that's a testimony to that I am feeling and better lately. See, there's there's a whole wonderful. I'm I'm intrigued by the conversation that's happening. Chat now. Are you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> because you know, when you get down to it, the bristles on insects, you know, are very similar to hairs, and sometimes there's like teachers in here breaking it down. I'm like, you should go come to teachers. Chat. Let's yeah. all shout out some love for teachers. I'm Teachers bringing, and libraries. I'm bringing a little bit of this light to the front of the eye. And then again, a little bit to the back because I'm going to be keeping the pink as one of the main focuses. And so some of this is that I've got to now start to move my lighter values, even though they will absolutely have that pink undertone. I want to move them there so that we can really see them. I'm going to come back here underneath and just paint that. I'll tell you what I needed to paint today. Today was a very stressful day. <laughs> I really needed a painting session. Probably as bad as you did. Probably as bad as you did. So I'm going to bring this up here. We can kind of see that the little nose comes up here. I'm going to highlight into that space. We probably should put some disclaimers up here that this is, we teach art and not anatomy. So any comments for or against the hair or non-hair of animals, invertebrates, vertebrates, and other things should be Don't left. teach spelling. Nope. Don't teach math. Don't teach geography. All of those for a reason. We refer all of those things to your local library. To your local library. <laughs> Introduce yourself to the Dewey Decimal System. Because they have, like, responsibility, unlike Wikipedia and WikiLeaks. To what know. did... You know. Do some research and make sure anything they tell you is somewhat true. Well, there's a book in there that somebody had to like print. So, and re like research and edit and know. And then generally, somebody looked at that book and said, Does this book contain good information? If it is, I'll put it in my library. So, generally, libraries are filled with good information. I don't know why we've become an advocate for the library today. But I don't it's know. Sunday, either. and today is the library advocacy the, day. The universe. Okay, said, let's step back. Let's zoom out a little bit and see how he's doing. Let's give him a look. Oh, he's so cute. Isn't that so cute? That's very cute. It's very cute. It's working out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's sometimes when you're trying to do something, it, it's just, I like doing these longer, more involved demos, and here's why. Yeah, I've got a lot of super easy, easy, easy painting. But sometimes teaching a slightly more advanced tutorial and really breaking it down helps artists that are ready to take that next level and also might help you no matter where you are in your art journey understand what's involved in a painting so you are not so hard on yourself about how quickly you should be done how many layers should be that what you believe should be in it 
by seeing different people like through their creation process, you can be like, oh, that's actually kind of involved. I could be easy with myself. Does that make sense? It does. This may be adorable, Lamb. He has gotten a bit adorable. Oh, I like him. I like him a lot. Bringing some of these light hairs here. I feel like he's saying, I has a hat. <laughs> Saying I has a hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. I mean, it's a conversation starter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure other lambs are like, I'm going to eat that hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know he's getting chased by the other lambs <laughs> in the field going. If you're not going to eat it, I will eat it. If you're not going to eat that, like my children do that all the time. If you're not eating that, I'll eat that. See, we all And you're like in the middle of a bite. <laughs> see, in truth, we, we know this is very akin to the Sherpa. We see this as a very cute hat. But what we know is this is actually just smack talking to the other lambs. <laughs> going, let's go play. He's smack talking the other lambs now? Because he's, he's got the hat that everybody wants to eat. I mean, who wouldn't want to eat that hat? It's a great hat. Well, see, now he's going to go talk to the lambs, and the lambs are going to come chase him. So he has the desirable... Oh, he's so cute. He's so cute. So cute. <laughs> I, I'm, like, just enjoying it. Guys, I'm sorry. What's happening here is that I'm just enjoying it now. It, it was, he's looking really cute. And it's honestly just making my weekend better. Sometimes I just paint to make the weekend better. <sighs> He's now these little brush strokes. You just keep layering them in there, just a little bit at a time. Man, now I'm gonna very softly kind of dry brush blend some of these little lines in. I don't want to take them away, but I don't want them to be mm. so completely noticeable. So I'm gonna soften them. I want them there. I just want them softer, and so that's really about having a very dry brush and just lightly touching things back into my little number three now we're gonna have to get our pink our magenta a little bit of our cad our yellow ochre again um, and some white i can't wait for the eyelashes i know they're just so good i'll eyelashes. put my vision enhancers on again I didn't realize that I came with sound effects. You didn't know you came with sound effects? Apparently they came preloaded my OS. <laughs> what? It's like Windows 95. You have to change your theme. So I've got that little pop of pink there. I'm going to go ahead and get some of the white. There we go. So just looking at the reference, figuring out how to shave out things, how to talk about things correctly. All right. I'm going to go ahead and kind of get my black back in there. And where it's got the little bit of blue in it. Pick that up. Make sure. You got to think of, especially on uh, livestock, horses, 
those kinds of things. Think of the eye as a marble in a socket. Hmm. And you'll really see the roundness of it. That's not really escapable. Now, the eyes have an interesting reflection. I'm looking at my reference if you're wondering where I'm going. Here, I'm going to put my reference on here. John's going to stay zoomed in, and I'm going to put my reference because i got to look. And I, so my glasses that, yeah. are not letting me see far away. <laughs> it's up close or far away, but it is not both. I'm going to take this sort of blue and white and black, and I'm going to start shading this. over here and there's a little bit of that right there midge above just a little more blue onto it Put you over a here little more a little white bit. on there i'm right here and bring some over here You overdo, don't worry. You can always get it back with your black. Look, if I have too much right there, I can always get it back with my black. Once I have those sort of soft and distant reflections, I can kind of come in and hit with just a little bit of the white. And bring this just a little bit. You can see I'm just working the corner of my brush, just tapping that in. And a little bit coming up. Do that. And you come over here, and there's a little bit of a top stronger highlight there. And then just something kind of hinted at here. I'm gonna get into my little my little skin color that I got going, but I'm gonna make a very, very light one. Again, right here. And then we got to figure out how to get these long lashes. So to do that, I've got to have pretty thin paint and a good brush. And normally I demo this with fluid paint, but oftentimes you guys don't have fluid paint. So I'm going to take some just regular white paint. I'm going to show you how to thin it down and use a detail brush to get those lashes in. So I'm going to put out some fresh white, as you do. And I'm going to peer around for one of my hardcore detail brushes. Oh, perfect. Monogram liner, my favorite. I'm going to take a little bit of my mister here, add some water. And I'm going to use my brush and I'm going to start to swirl around. See how it's thinning? I'm incorporating water into the paint. I want enough of the pigment and polymer so it stays binding. So I can't thin it more than 30 to 40%. So that is the issue with using non-fluid paints for these types of more fluid activities is that oftentimes by the time you get them thin enough, I just wiped off my brush and I'm gonna load just the tip here. And touch my finger. The lighter touch you are, the better. The more gentle you are, the happier you're going to be with the result. Something I really want to express to you, though, is the lashes are not a requirement. They are an option. Now, if you haven't done a lot of lashes, go ahead and practice, you know? There, you gonna come here. A weird bunch right there.
I know I'm quiet. It's because I, like you, am thinking. <laughs> He's just concentrating. <laughs> I'm no, concentrating. I, I do. I have to concentrate, too, sometimes. I'm all super focused, making sure I keep the camera centered on what all you're right. doing. I feel like we've got that. Wow. And I'm happy with that. And this is this is at a place where I feel like I could stop and be happy, but I still want to do some more flowers like we talked about. More flowers? Well, if you remember earlier, we talked about doing some more flowers. You can always do more flowers. There's always more flowers. There's always room for more flowers. So I'm going to take my round. And now I'm going to take my yellow and a smidge of my green. I make a very bright color with a little bit of the white in there. I'm going to tap in a few pops of very bright leaves. Oh, yeah. Everyone agrees. More flowers. Can you not, not have too many more flowers, right? Can... Those are great. Right? Something bright and cheerful. You can do little touches of color. Remember, when you're doing flowers, it's not about doing every petal, unless you're doing uh, something where you're really focusing on the, the high realism of something. You're talking about shapes and forms and compositions. So by varying out these little areas of pink and, and having fun, what other color could we add some interest with? Yellow was always yeah. good. Yellow always feels like spring. With your... This orangey peaches colors are kind of cool up there. I don't know if focus can go on there in a matchy matchy way. <laughs> you can always add a little bit of those little yellow drops too. Mm, I like them. See, there it is. I like that. And you're going to notice that I, I put these things kind of out wild. Mm, they so fly now his away. fur's up in that, it's up in them. Oh, if that you want, so good. You can pull like one clover, maybe like right here. One clover to tease them all. <laughs> Somebody who's maybe kind of facing forward. So we're going to take a little stroke. That's a slightly hard angle for me. Got to figure out, I think what I want is to hold it like this. Hmm. To get the little inverted where I'm doing the flower. brush strokes at my strongest angle, but where you know, sometimes it's nice to. Play with things. Now make sure that you're feeling great about it. You should feel great about it. He really did turn out great. Isn't he just lovely? And it's always okay you now to find your space in something. Never going to be sorry that you did. So nice, isn't it? It really is. 
I think that is lovely. So I'm going to take... Uh, la, 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 la. Where would you even sign something like this? I will probably sign... I can sign down here quietly. I can sign along the neck, which is more my style. I can sign over here. You can sign on the back if you need to. I think I need my monogram liner for this one. Mm. Brush is too thick. So signing is really about having enough flow of your color that you're signing with. Like the paint's got to be pretty fluid. You want to make sure that you haven't you know, signed it with some crazy color that's going to distract from the whole painting. Try to sign in a way that considers all the work that you've just done creating this. You wouldn't want to put a big red gash across it if it didn't have any red and it wasn't going to make it a better painting by putting a big red gash. I like to do those like weird little tucked in signatures where it's part of the comp, but it's not noticeable. You can easily see that it's there. So you know who made it, but it doesn't detract from the whole piece. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. Oh, he turned out so nice. All right, my turn. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. I needed to get some blue oh, on. Did so you guys, nice. you know what? I just realized like th that his flowers and my hair. <laughs> That's, did you, that's what I was saying earlier. Your little spirit right animal now. over there with your little taunting hair and your little like other oh, little lambs are like, I've got the hair of get the hair. Your little art imitates life. Life Un imitates art. I don't know where it begins and I end. I don't even know. Unexpected Sherpa should say, "Ba ram you." Ba ram you. Seriously, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I genuinely want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.